Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona real estate market, and it's changing quickly. Have you ever seen rates go up this fast? I mean, I've certainly seen them go high and higher, but this fast? Wow, we're over six already. And that happened really quick, so we're seeing some changes here. But then you have to ask yourself, with all the new listings coming on, who's putting their house up for sale? As we shared the other day, 53% of the homeowners out there have a mortgage lower than 4%, closer to 3 and 37% of homeowners don't have a mortgage at all. So who is it that's listing their houses? Now, you've heard me say over and over again, we're not going to see a crash until we see excessive inventory. We're sitting near about 11, 12,000 homes right now. Normal is considered about 27,000. The last time we saw things go south quickly, and by quickly it took a couple of years, was back in 2007 when we had 55,000 homes on the market. So could we get there? Possibly. We'll see it coming. Uh, we're getting more and more listings every week. We're actually increasing by about 900 to 1,000 of available homes every seven days. So it's going to be interesting to watch. That's why you're seeing things like August will be closer to a balanced market than we've been in a long time. And Here's the people that's selling the houses, possibly. Where are these listings coming from? Those with homes they do not actually need are likely to be the first to sell, and these include wealthy people with multiple homes who can easily do without their Arizona getaway. Makes sense. Landlords with multiple properties who would like to reduce their exposure by selling one or more of their investment properties. We've been hoping that would happen for a long time. Short-term rental owners, Airbnb style, who can quickly cancel their bookings and exit the market if they see risky times ahead. So even though they've got bookings that have gone out a few months, they decide they want to get out of that business and move that house while well, the getting is good, then uh, you'll see those put up for sale. And uh, a lot of those get sold with the furniture. So it's going to be interesting to watch. And we are seeing a lot of repercussions with the increase in rates and the increase in available homes for sale. But one of the things that we're seeing right now that's kind of an extreme is the number of price cuts. And these are from people that have put their homes on the market because they haven't quite got the memo yet that things are slowing down. And so they overprice. So they, whoop, we better pull this thing back. I suspect as we get into the summer that this number and this chart will come back down because people will start pricing more realistically. Could be wrong, but that's what my gut tells me as we go forward into the summertime. Days on market are starting to come up. They haven't popped up quickly yet. In May, they were 25.58, and in June, 26.60, uh, but they're definitely going to climb up days on market. For buyers, that's great news. You got more time to look at homes. You got more variety. For sellers, it's going to take you a little bit longer unless you price correctly. The contract ratio is dropping. They're People are not as successful at selling their house as they were a couple of months ago. And home prices that are selling over list has dropped to 49%. That was rocking about 60%. It depends on the price point. But um, you can see that all the metrics are going in favor of buyers and away from sellers. But it's not a buyer's market yet. So you may have to wait a while for that. But I've got some things here to, to read you really quickly really quick. Price reductions are now up 258% in 10 weeks. But just over the past five weeks, the days on market prior to contract has started to rise as well. Over the next four weeks, expect the number of closings over asking price to drop sharply. I said 49% I showed you. I'll bet you that's down to 30 here real quick. And it says here, along with the dollar amount, and expect to be reintroduced to buyer contingencies, price negotiations, paying for home warranties, and eventually closing cost assistance. These aspects will return to the marketplace before sales prices ultimately respond. This isn't a buyer's market, but it feels like it compared to two or three months ago. So we're getting there. And it also doesn't feel like much of a buyer's market when the cost to borrow the money is, is rising. And that, that's getting kind of ugly. And uh, there's an article here from the New York Post about the bond market. Because everybody's focusing on the Fed. And how many points is the Fed going to raise it? The Fed going to raise it. And the bond market's basically taking over and telling the Fed, you're not clamping down hard enough. We're going to do it for you. It's a really complicated thing to understand. But I'll go ahead and read a couple things here for you. It says, 
The Fed's not the only game in town controlling interest rates. Bond traders do as well by trading so-called fixed income investments that are highly sensitive to inflation. They're saying when inflation spikes, bonds and the interest payments they deliver, as well as the principal they pay at some date in the future, are worth less. So inflation kills the bonds. Thus, the prices fall and their yields spike. Investors demand more for their risk of inflation eating returns. That drives up interest rates on everything. In conclusion, it says here, you would rather have the Fed controlling interest rates than the bond market. The government can try to take it slow, whereas the bond market is agnostic to the suffering of the American people. But by buying so many bonds to keep the economy awash in case, Jerome Powell lost a lot of leverage to engineer what's known as a soft landing. It's been taken away from him, the power to control the money supply. Powell is set to raise short-term rates this week, but the bond market's flashing warning signs saying it's not enough. They're also saying if Powell doesn't fix the problem, the bond market will do it for him, and the pain to the American people will only get worse. That's not very cheery news, but it's basically saying the bond market is watching this very closely and saying, look, this inflation is eating us up, and uh, so we're going to have to get in and react, and that's going to slow the economy, and all those other metrics I show you are going to change dramatically. More homes for sale, um, higher cost to borrowers, and you see that the Mortgage Bankers Association is predicting that interest rates will be about 4.5% in 2024. That's an optimistic forecast. It says, if you get in now at 6.18, I can refinance by 2024. That's great. That's probably good, good money play, but like anything else, you got to take it with a grain of salt because nobody's good at predicting that far out, and I don't care how smart those guys are. At the beginning of this year, when I looked at Realtor.com, their prediction for interest rates at the end of 2023 was 3.47. So all these big teams of economists are not getting it right, so I won't either. All I can do is share the numbers with you and let you know what's going on. I read an interesting post on a, on a Facebook group of, of real estate agents here in Arizona, and somebody was complaining that you know real estate agents got to stop putting out negative news, you're influencing the market. I'm like, you know, get over yourself. I, real estate agents don't influence the market. The numbers are the numbers. I, I'm i not influencing the bond market, and Chairman Powell won't take my calls. <laughs> so, like, we just have to deliver the truth. We have to tell you what's going on in the market. And what's going on in the market right now is an increase in listings and a shortage of buyers. Now, the buyer pool has not dropped dramatically, so don't get me wrong. We've gone from about 4,000 to 3,300 every seven days. That's not dramatic, but it's enough when you combine it with the new listings coming on to make a difference. With the interest rates continuing to spike, that gap between homes on the market and buyers out there is going to get even wider and wider. So stay tuned. That's what we do here on this channel as we look at the numbers. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.